even with instability ligamentously, people can get better by getting the other half of spinal stability to be stable. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Hutchison, and today's talk is on spinal stability. Many people around the world have become privy or aware that spinal stability can be a really important thing for regaining health when you're suffering debilitating symptoms or even something that's just annoying and agonizing. Like you always have tension in your shoulder or you get muscle spasms that don't go away when you get a great massage or you get dry needling to a muscle or you stretch it and you feel temporary relief or even when you stretch something, it makes you feel worse when you get more relaxed. Up until this point, most of the world has focused on treating ligaments for spinal stability, which is half of the puzzle. However, something that we've been really getting a lot of great results with over the last three months has been a missing link in spinal stability, has been treating the tendons. Over the last several months, we made what I believe to be a small discovery in the importance of treating tendons to improve spinal stability. Several of our patients had gained full ligamentous stability, but still suffered debilitating symptoms, whether it be terrible head pressure, head pain, difficulty focusing, being uncomfortable, anxiety, heart palpitations, uh, irregular blood pressure, and the list goes on. If you follow and watch some of our other videos, you'll see the list of symptoms that people can get from having problems with what we call ACS or alignment, curvature, and stability, which are the three foundations of structural health. When many of these patients reached back out to us for follow-up care, complaining of a similar thing that, wow, doc, my C2 always goes out, or I continue to get that tension in my SCM or my shoulder feels tight, and it's producing all of these debilitating symptoms, I get led down a path and discovered that when I treat the tendons specifically in a specific way in order to bring healing to degenerated or frayed tendons that are causing the abnormal pulling in the muscles, that we're getting almost instantaneous results with reduction in pulling. The muscles are relaxing on their own. The patients are feeling greater stability through treating the tendons and many of their symptoms are being resolved. It's really funny how things come full circle, and this discovery has led me back to a time when I was still a student at National University of Health Sciences at one of our annual homecoming seminars. And I was sitting next to our president, Dr. James Winterstein, as we were watching a presentation on a gentleman that was doing very specific work to tendons. He was claiming that if he treated the tendons, which are on either side of a muscle, and treated them enough that the muscle belly would relax on its own. And it's interesting because that one part of the seminar stuck with me throughout the entirety of the last 10 or 12 years. And I couldn't really tell why that was such, such an important moment for me until now. Another funny thing that happened during that conference was that the gentleman that was teaching this training asked to bring somebody on stage. And I was sitting close to or next to the president of the university, and I had on a suit and a tie, but for some reason I felt inclined to volunteer. And I usually don't. I usually don't volunteer to go up on stage. And so I volunteered and I had to go up in front of the entire room of all these doctors and everyone was all dressed up. And I had to take off my coat and take off my shirt and my tie. And he worked on a spot on my shoulder showing me how if he worked on the tendons on each side, it would relax the muscle belly. Fast forward to today and <laughs> full circle, I've now realized why that that moment was stuck in my head and so important for me to have experienced. Because we're finding that that component of spinal stability, which is having strong, healthy tendons, which are, again, much more likely to experience degeneration earlier onset than ligaments do, is going to bring a great amount of spinal stability. Tendons, which we use all the time, any time that you move your body through space, your tendons are pulling bones in order to create the motion. So our tendons are much more likely to get exposed to excessive forces from whatever position we're in when we're moving and using our hands on our computers or on our cell phones, or if we have a job where we're constantly turning something, or if we're an athlete and we're constantly using an arm, it's those tendons that first will experience some degeneration. When the tendons experience that degeneration, 
the muscles are going to be constantly in a state of a little bit of hypertonicity or even experiencing spasms. Now, once those tendons are slightly degenerated, which means that the tissue just isn't normal, you may not even really get to see it on an ultrasound or on an image because they're not full tears and they're not completely degenerated, but they have micro tears that you would only see if you were to put them under a microscope. A way to visualize this is if you took a band, a stretchy band, and you poked a bunch of holes in it that you would use for exercise or therapy, but you just held it relaxed without any tension. You might not see those holes. And once you stretched it, those little holes would probably become more visible. That's what happens with these little tendon injuries. And over time, when those tendons are having a harder time moving your body through space, the muscles will get tight and cramp down as a result. Not only do the muscles cramp down and get tight as a result of the tendons having degeneration, but they also shorten from that prolonged tension, which causes abnormal curvature and then begins to place excessive force on ligaments, which are the last part that usually get the injury. In many of these cases, it's very common that somebody has had a very long standing, subtle amount of tension in their shoulder, their neck, even in your low back, your ankle, your wrist, anywhere that you're having a problem, which we do treat other areas besides the neck. If you want help and you have a problem in your ankle, in your low back, your hip, your shoulder, you can still reach out to our team and we'll be happy to help you. The small miracle here is that I have five millimeters of instability every time that I bend this way and back to neutral. But because I've rehabilitated all of the tendons and also improved my spinal curvature, I feel amazing almost every day, all day. And five millimeters of C1, C2 overhang is considered by most professionals to be a pretty severe amount. So the point here is that if you really rehabilitate the tendons, and if I had known about this 10 years earlier, I probably could have avoided even reaching this much instability in the first place. So if you already have the instability, you still can treat the tendons, improve the spinal curvature, elongate the muscles, get better range of motion while still getting more stable, just by starting with working on something that's more benign. Even with instability, ligamentously, people can get better by getting the other half of spinal stability to be stable. And that starts with your tendons, which are really easy for us to treat here at our office. And with all of our advanced diagnostics, we can find out exactly which tendons that we need to treat to bring balance and equal pulling through the muscles. Another interesting thing about treating tendons to reduce spinal instability and bring health and healing is that there is an art to it. Many prolotherapists will just treat the entire neck. They'll just say, we're gonna treat all of these capsular ligaments and go all the way up and down the neck and without differentiation for one area being more important than another. I have seen miracles happen from getting this kind of treatment done. And also I've seen miraculous stories just from getting one bone adjusted or from being to physical therapy for two weeks. I mean, there are amazing stories of healing happening all over in all different disciplines of healthcare. But back to the point about the art of doing tendinous dry needling is that you have to find where is there an abnormal pulling because muscles pull bones and having equal pulling is what is going to allow integrity and spinal stability. So when you're getting your tendons treated with dry needling, it has to be done in a way that creates a more equal or balanced pulling between the skeleton. And that's once again, where the art comes in. And here at our office, we have all the diagnostics and experience to be able to help you determine which of your tendons need to be addressed because it's not always where you think. On occasion, we used to think that, wow, the SCM is so tight. We need to treat the origin and the insertion of the SCM. Later to find out that it was actually something in the back of the shoulder that we needed to treat, which caused the shoulder to be in a more neutral position and the SCM relaxed on its own. A final point of contention here is that Typically in these harder cases, if you've already tried doing dry needling to the muscle belly for a trigger point, if you've worked on stretching, if you've done any other therapy that seems to be either not helping or it almost kind of makes you feel worse, that you don't want to just relax a muscle when the tendons are degenerated because those tendons are what move the bone 
through space. And if they're degenerated, they're having a harder time moving the bone through space. So they're creating a muscle spasm in the blood rich muscle belly, which is giving you a more artificial stability. I'm just like many of you out there. I used to think that chronic muscle spasms were only because of ligamentous injury. And this small breakthrough is pretty eye opening because while if you have extreme instability from a ligament, it could be the sole reason that you're getting muscle spasms that are perpetual and seem to be never ending as much as you do to try to release them. But now we know that many of these muscle spasms can be coming because the muscle at the tendon is degenerated. If you feel that you have tendons or abnormal muscle pulling that is contributing to your symptoms, please feel free to reach out to our team. You can email us at doctor at drhutchison.com and we'll be happy to review your case and see if we can help you. So thank you so much for being part of our journey and we look forward to staying in touch.